Hello everyone, welcome to our presentation. The technology we have chosen to review is a clinical decision support system called the explain uh, We have chosen to do this assignment as a group of three, largely to benefit from the learnings of each other. In our group, we have myself, Ritesh, Kara and Lee. We have a pretty packed agenda for the presentation. Uh, we'll start by explaining what is a clinical decision support system. Then we'll introduce the explain. Uh, we'll also give you a little bit of history about uh, how the explain came into being and where it is now. Then we'll get into how it works. Uh, we'll even do a little demo for you. Actually, the explain has a demo available on their website. Uh, what we'll do is do a little bit of a walkthrough uh, for you. After that, we'll talk a little bit about the limitations of the explain, uh, do comparisons uh, of the explains with other CDSs that are out there, talk, uh, talk about uh, evaluation and see what we want in the future. Uh, let's get started. So, what is CDSS? Basically, at a high level, it is a, an application that analyzes data to help healthcare providers make clinical decisions. It is adapted from decision support systems that are commonly used to support business management and have been around for a while. There are mainly two types of CDSS. Uh, one is where a system uses knowledge base and applies rules to arrive at a decision. So the system has a database of uh, knowledge and uh, certain rules and based on what you query, uh, it will give you a certain output. Uh, an example is the explain itself, whereas the other, you have to rely on the machine itself to learn and analyze data. For example, systems that use artificial intelligence. As we said, one such uh, CDSs which use knowledge base uh, and rules is CDSs. The current CDSs knowledge base includes over 2,400 diseases and over 5,000 clinical findings. The explain can act both as an electronic textbook and as a medical reference system as well. As an electronic medical textbook, you can find descriptions of over 2,400 different diseases and as a medical reference system, the explain can provide you with up to 10 references for each of the diseases that it contains. Let's talk a little bit about the history of the explain. It was developed at a lab of computer science at Massachusetts General Hospital. Uh, development, development began in 1984. The first version with information of, on approximately 500 diseases was released in 1986. National distribution of the explained with a database of approximately 2,000 diseases began in 1987 over a dial-up MNET. After MNET ceased operation in 1990, the explained continued to be distributed over dial-up networks until 1995. Between 1991 and 1996, it was also distributed as a standalone version that could be loaded on an individual PC. Since 96, it has been distributed over the internet. All other forms of distribution has been stopped. Now all you need is internet connection and an institutional license for MGH to be able to access the explain. The way it works is it collects clinical information and makes use of Bayesian logic to derive clinical interpretation. As promised, I'll do a little bit of walkthrough for you to get a feel of how it works. So the user logs in to the explain and uh, before this is the logon page basically. Uh, email address is used only as a unique identifier for logging in uh, and uh, it's never shared with anyone else. Uh, MGH complies with, with security policies or at least they claim they do. 
after you accept the terms and conditions, uh, you get into to this screen where you have to at least enter three fields. One is the age, uh, your gender, and the symptoms that you have been experiencing time that you have been experiencing symptoms for. Once you've entered that, you can start doing a lookup. In this instance, the symptom has been weight. Uh, we'll start with weight and then we'll, it will start giving you prompts. For example, weight loss, uh, weight gain, uh, low weight, and, and so on and so forth. Now, to indicate that a finding is absent rather than present, you can click no up here uh, before selecting the finding from the match list and it will accordingly show up look up section. Now, as the findings are selected, they appear in the case finding window. So for example, weight loss could, could relate to, to following case findings. And as a result, it will display you a set of common diseases and rare diseases that these symptoms could relate to. In this instance, could be um, malaria uh, as a rare and diabetes as a common disease. Yeah. Once we have finalized the case findings, the explain prompts you uh, prompts uh, you for clinical findings that may help distinguish between possible diagnosis. Uh, the user can choose to indicate that one of the suggested clinical manifestation is present uh, by selecting Y or N or unknown. Uh, if uh, the staff wants to know what, what these symptoms mean, they can click on the question mark and it will display uh, a little bit of explanation. The current finding list is too low in this instance is too long to fit on this screen and you have a little scroll down to scroll through. Uh, after additional clinical findings have been entered, a reviewed list is shown with uh, several diagnostic are now uh, supported. Uh, when the user clicks on, on disease, uh, the explain will bring up the evidence and a bit more uh, information about that particular disease. And then you can move on to the next screen. Uh, user can choose to uh, look at the disease description. Uh, also look at uh, findings that support it, bring up this disease. And evidence of the disease. How is this disease different? Mm, uh, what this disease feature displays a differential diagnosis for selected disease. and so on. You get a gist of how, how it basically works. You could also do a search for, for the diseases that mm, Google search for, for diseases, it supports that, and so on and so forth. Now I'll pass on to my friend Lee, who will talk us through a bit about some of the desired features that she'd like the explained to have. Thank you, Ritesh, for the demonstration. For the next three slides, I will talk about features, limitations of DXPlan, and also a comparison among similar products. Besides features like user-friendly interface, easy to access, and the well-justified rank result list, DXPlan developers have added many new features that we found useful and exciting. The findings present function is the most widely used feature which allows the user enters only one or two non-demographic terms directly and then select dozens from the finding present list. In general, around 42% of users are using this function. In the focus feature, the explain will present only those diseases in which those focus cru crucial findings are known to occur in those case finding scenarios. And disease compare allows the users to select two or more diseases and see associated findings compared in a graphic table in order to allow the user to easily review similarities and differences among them. There are also some limitations in using DXPlan. It doesn't allow the entry of many of the unstructured data and the result can be inconsistent among different users. 
DXPlan can only be used as an adjunct and information base and a well specified medical knowledge resource. However, it can never be treated as a replacement for the clinician's knowledge and experience. In order to explore more details about this plan, we also evaluated two similar CTSS products in market. They are Diagnosis Pro and Isabel. For the building philosophy, DX Plan and DioPro are expert systems that aim to solve clinical problems with a complex network of clinical findings and disease names and disease names within their database. While Isabel simply aims to remind clinicians of key diagnostic possibilities. The remind system is dealing with the situation that when people making complex decisions under stressful circumstance in a short time, even clinicians may forget to consider important diagnostic possibilities during work. That's what Isabel is working on. And we can see that among those three, DX plan has been put into use for the longest time, which we can see how robust the system is. But it is only for institution use, and that might be the reason why there is no mobile access for it. Next, DX plan allows very limited input of demographic information, only age, gender, and estimate duration of the disease, while Diapro doesn't allow that at all, and Isabel is the most flexible one among the three. Uh, DX plan allows the input of negative findings, such as no fever, as supportive findings and guides, which could be used to support a re refuted disease. Uh, all of those three systems allow information populated from EHR, though DXPlan has very limited access. Lastly, Isabel was the only program using natural language processing search engine, and the only product allowed uh, unstructured data. So that, that's uh, everything about this comparison table. Next, Kara will discuss about evaluation and some future expectations. Thanks, Lee. This graph shows use by major user category of DXPlan from 1999 to 2004 in America. Use by physicians has grown dramatically since 2000. The large increase from 2000 to 2001 reflected the addition of DXPlan to a trusted medical reference website aimed at individual physicians. The increased use by first and second year medical students and by nurses reflects in part increased use of DXPlan as a formal class assignment in courses on medical decision making at several hospitals and medical schools. Though these are not most updated data, we still can get an idea that decision support systems as DXPlan are getting increasing concerns. And specifically, there are two studies' positive conclusions about DXPlan I want to show you. And the first study aims to determine whether internal medicine residents would find the use of an expert system to be a satisfactory experience. All residents were encouraged to access DXPlan. Connected survey data reflect a significant level of satisfaction with the system. They said, DXPlan frequently led them to consider novel diagnosis, such as it had a positive educational impact. And the second study is, um, for inpatients who have short stay, residents may overlook symptoms which cannot be easily noticed. And this one is about whether DXPlan can speed their diagnosis generations process and gives more accurate results which leads to a shorter, more effective, and less costly hospital stay. And the finding is that using DXPlan might save over $2 million a year and also improve diagnosis quality. So here we just mentioned a little bit about evaluation 
and more details will be discussed in the report. And in the future, as medical knowledge is continually expanding, an expert system must expand and evolve. So it is possible that DXPlan will have continued and growing use in the future. Users at all levels of medical and nursing training and practice can benefit from use of expert system like DXPlan, though patterns of use vary. As we seen from the demo slides, the use is initially requested to enter age, gender, and the duration of symptoms. We recommend that they add more demographic entries like family history, personal, social factors to narrow search in. At last, with increasing federal emphasis on interoperability of EHRs, adherence to health level 7 standards will be also considered. And that's all of our presentation. Thanks for your time.